So I'm not really the hardware kind of guy as some of you might know but I think I'll make an exception just this time because um may have gotten something. Hey guys, Clumsy here. This is going to be a bit of a different video, even the camera angle is different, right? This is going to be more of a, hmm, let's say, a, an informal vlog than a formal review kind of uh, thing, alright? But I think it's going to be great. It's going to be challenging, but stay tuned, okay? Hang tight. First and foremost, uh, let me give a huge, huge thanks to ASUS for sending over their uh, Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 3080 OC Edition. Um, I literally wouldn't be able to make this video without them. <laughs> so a uh, little backstory, full disclosure, um, a few weeks back, so I've been keeping this a secret for a few weeks now, a few weeks back ASUS reached out to me, um, reached out might be too generous a term, maybe took pity on me would be the more uh, <laughs> proper term. <laughs> Asus took pity on me and reached out and uh, they asked me if I wanted to feature the RTX 3080, their Tough Gaming OC Edition. And uh, deep inside I was like, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Is that even a question? G give me! <laughs> and so... But of course I acted all professional and stuff. Acted is the operative word. So... We handled the logistics, couple of challenges, but it it's here now. Um, but yeah, we were talking, okay, so what do we do? Uh, basically, we talked about like, so what do you want for it? And I was like, can I keep it? <laughs> what else would I want? Can I keep it? Right? Because I think normally, I don't normally do these reviews. But I think normally when you review something, when you feature something, you try it out, you make a video of it, and then you give it back. I don't want to give it back. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, enough preamble. This is going to be more of an informal vlog. As I mentioned to you, the camera angle will be all informal using my phone. Um, we'll try to assemble, unbox the graphics card briefly. We'll do a uh, disassembly. I'll show you my rig. I'll show you all the wires, all the clutter. Uh, I know a lot of you have been requesting for uh, set up video. This is going to be as close as possible to that so you'll see all the dangling wires out there and uh, I promised myself I will make this my resolution. When I get a new GPU, I will try and fix the cables just a tiny bit. So this is it guys. Let's do it. Okay, so this might sound a bit different than usual more like in a call rather than uh, watching a YouTube video. Sorry about that. I had to attach my Bluetooth headset that I use for work <laughs> so that I can record this using my phone. So apologies for that. Anyway, here are the wires, all the tangled up mess there. <laughs> I was able to remove the CPU now. The CPU is right there. I have not cleaned it in a while. I'm scared how dirty it will be, but we'll see. So in order to make the RTX 3080 work, I actually have to upgrade my PSU. I previously had a 600 watt PSU. We'll be replacing it with this one, the Seasonic 850 watt PSU. 80 plus gold rating, reviews are very good. So this is the one I bought and it was very affordable. So we'll see how it installs. It is fully modular, so that's a good thing. All right, let's open this guy up. That's me, with my headset, <laughs> with my phone. <laughs> Maybe it would be helpful if I had two hands here, huh? And yes, that's where the clumsy name comes from. So this will slide off. This is a, I forgot what the name of the case is. Cooler Master N300 or something like that. Nothing fancy. No RGBs, minimal lighting. 
and there is the beauty of my cable management. <laughs> Isn't that the beauty? Isn't that a work of art, especially this one? Just had to go through somewhere. <laughs> uh, yes, so that's my old PSU. 600 watts won't do it for the RTX 3080, so I'll have to upgrade that. The rest, well, I'll have to all, remove all the cables, replace them. Hopefully, it will look a bit more professional. This is the GPU, the GTX 1070. The RTX 3080 will probably be around this point. It will be a, a, a tight squeeze. I hope it will fit. I, I measured it and it looks like it, but we will see for ourselves. Okay, let's do the unboxing. Et voila, magic. Because <laughs> I can't open it with one hand, had to pause the video. But anyway, inside the box is this fancy, very sleek looking box. Another box, box option. We have the foam and we have the GPU right there. Oh my goodness, that is humongous. I hope it fits. Oh, and there's also these uh, thank you cards. A, uh, what is this, certificate? Interesting. Oh, you can probably stick that somewhere, huh? Certificate of reliability. Oh, I like that. Nice touch. And you have the speed setup. I guess like a quick installation thing with all the different languages. Okay, cool. And there she is. I think that's how they usually position it, right? Very professional standing up like that. I hope I'm not breaking it in the process. GeForce RTX 3080 Tough Gaming by Asus. Let's have a look at the back there. And uh, the biggest test of them all, seeing if it will fit in the casing. So there are some measurements here and um, I'm going to share it with you. This is the link to the full specs. And there she is. My goodness, it does fit. So if you look at that, uh, look at my feet. <laughs> if you look at that, it does kind of barely fit in there like it was built for the thing. Even the casing, the overall look of the casing, right? Plain black, nothing fancy, blends perfectly well with this GPU. And that was the old one, the 1070. Two fans, very small. Awesome. Let's do this. Okay, back to the work at hand. First order of business is to remove all these cables. It, this is a non-modular PSU, so all the cables are attached there. It should be pretty straightforward, but uh, I'll have to pause the video because I'll need two hands for this. Wish me luck. Okay, brief update, the guts are out. Pretty straightforward, removing all the connectors from the motherboard. I think that one's for the CPU motherboard. Uh, yes, I still have a DVD drive. Oh, you can't see it. A DVD drive. Uh, two SATA drives here. Um, two SSD SATA drives. One here, one here. So removing all the power connections to those. And now we will remove the actual PSU itself. I think I've untangled most of the other cables. The SATA cables, I just kept there. Yeah, they, they can just, just tuck them in under, I guess. So you don't actually push it out. The screws there basically just lock the PSU in place, but you kind of just grab it from here, I guess. And that is that. Yeah, PSU is out. Cool. Should be this way, they should be down, right? Yeah, that looks like it. Okay, I started reading the manual, thank goodness, of the PSU. And apparently you have to test this first before you plug it into your actual motherboard. So before, ideally before even mounting it to the CPU, to the casing, 
you have to test this. So I attached the cable for the motherboard, this one. And then they, they provided some kind of like tester in here, which basically slots in here. So the other end of this is attached to the PSU itself. And we just simply have to power this on. Ideally, the fan should start turning and that would mean that the PSU is working. So let's try it out. Turn on the power on the plug, turn on this one. Okay, I removed it from the casing again, just to be sure. Those are the connections. That's the one connected to the tester. And uh, let's turn on the power on the outlet. And this one should be a one here. That's not really turning. Oh, there it is. Ah, so hybrid mode is when that button is not pressed. So the fan stops. So this is probably like the silent mode. So by default, it's silent mode, I guess. When you press it, that's when the fans would start spinning. And I can feel it already. When I remove that, then the fans should stop. That's probably the silent mode. So I'll look into that more later. For now, I'll keep it pressed. But that looks good. Right, continuing on. Okay, I removed the GPU. This was the old one. Pretty straightforward. Remove the screws. Yeah, it was a two slot GPU. Hmm, how the heck do we fit the 3080 in here? It's going to be an interesting question. Also, I realize as much as I'd want to do a proper cable management here, that part, as we can see, uh, that one, there you go, that on top of the Gigabyte logo, that slot right there is where I need to connect from the PSU to that point. But once I connect there, where the heck would I route it? There is absolutely no space anywhere. Well, I guess I could route it here up top, here maybe, move it around there, but <laughs> it's going to be a tight squeeze, my goodness. Yeah, we will see. Well, I put that in now, it's black, so that's good. This was the thing that was going over the video card before. I think even though I can't put it behind, I can just keep it under the video card. So basically hiding it like that. So here's where I'll be putting the 3080. So if essentially this cable will be underneath the GPU. So ideally that should work. I'll need two hands for this guys. So I was trying so hard to fit the darn thing in. It wouldn't. Don't be like me guys. Don't be like me. See this thing? <laughs> I compared it with the 1070. Where are those clips, or however you call them? And voila, there is apparently, this is actually a cover. <laughs> okay, now I'm ready to attach it. And there it is. I don't think the CPU cable, the PSC, the power supply cable to the CPU is hassling anyone anymore. It's underneath, looks good. This tough gaming design is perfect for this case. No fuss, no RGB, but very sleek looking. Can't wait to power this up. So I'll attach the rest of the cables and I'll bring you guys back. <sighs> Wish me luck. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I've attached all the cables. Thank goodness they're black, so they're not that obvious. I am still pretty lazy with the cable management though. I would didn't even use a single cable tie. Um, yeah, let's just leave that be. But yeah, the overall build is done. Looks good, pretty sleek. Nothing fancy, just the way I like it. And there's something that is here in the graphics card as well. The performance in quiet mode. I think currently that is in performance mode. Okay, perfect. 
don't think I'll be using that. I, I would want the most performance as much as possible. So let me patch this up, close this up, and uh, we'll see if it boots. Keeping my fingers crossed. All right, let's do this. Ooh, I'm nervous. PC is attached, cables are still a mess because I'm too tired already. <laughs> I don't think I have enough energy to manage the cables. Postpone that for next time. Let's not be too ambitious. All right, let's do this. I have here the power. I have the power. And turn on this guy here. All right, monitors are powering up. Doesn't look good. Switch on the PSU. We have power. Oh, and there's a bit of RGB on the video card. Interesting. Looks like my display ports are wrongly maintained. Can I adjust that? So I'm switching the placement of the display port so that when the PC powers up, the center one is the main monitor. Okay, there it is. That's the main monitor. So here we are. We log in. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll have to reinstall the graphics card first. But this is looking promising. Only a single monitor is being used. That's okay. So we'll have to install it via... Well, I guess I can use NVIDIA Experience. Oh. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Looks like it installed something. Probably it's reinstalling the video card on its own. There we go. The, the desktop is back. Okay, so ideally we would reinstall the graphics card. There we go. NVIDIA GeForce Game Driver. And I think a safer bet would be to do like a clean installation of the driver so here let's go for drivers so we do have a new one 456.71 download that should be pretty quick 580 mb okay custom installation graphics driver hd audio driver physics system software yes but this one there's a checkbox here it's, it might be too small to see but it says perform a clean installation there's a checkbox here so I think that would be the safe option just so we are sure we are doing it clean. Good. It's done. Didn't even need to restart. Is that real? And we are back. My screen sharing OBS Studio is back. Normal voice is back so we can get right to it. So what I've done so far, I have tweaked a little NVIDIA control panel, just the basic stuff. What has been recommended by some people, I think this also is the same recommendation from Jay's Two Cents, is to go to the NVIDIA control panel and set the power management mode to prefer maximum performance. And if I remember correctly, texture filtering quality to high performance and then save those as the global settings and that's it. From there, I proceeded to run 3D Mark uh, one time for Fire Strike and one time for Time Spy for the DirectX 11 and 12 tests, uh, respectively. And here are the results. So, this one is for Fire Strike 29558. That probably doesn't have any bearing, like reference 41187. This is very nice to see, though. Better than 99% of results. <laughs> Never happened to me before, but uh, pretty happy with that. Some more interesting numbers though would be the ones here. So if you look at clock frequency, 1950. Even though the published boost clocks are around 1700, 1710, it actually does a GPU boost and can go up to 1950 MHz. And uh, the average is 1923, so pretty close to 2000. What's even more interesting though is the average temperature is only 59 degrees Celsius. In my old 
GTX 1070, the normal temps I get when I'm maxing out the GPU is 80 degrees. So that's 20 degrees colder. And also the idle temperatures of this card. I was getting around 32, 33 degrees a while ago while I was uh, not recording yet. Normally I would be at 53, 54, so it's like 20 degrees colder overall. Very nice. So that's with Fire Strike. That's with Time Spy. Tactics 11 and 12. This one better than 98% of the results. Uh, here the uh, clock frequency is 1935, the GPU boost, but the average is a bit lower. The temperature is a bit hotter, but my goodness, 62 degrees is actually very, very good given the power that this is spitting out. And if we do a quick comparison on the before and after here. So on the left is the 1070, on the right is the 3080. You can see the score, especially if you focus on the graphics. 17,638 before and now 39,000, which is more than twice. I did the math a while ago. Let's try that. 3942, 17638. That's 2.2 times better. I did notice that my physics score lowered a bit. That might just be the random variance, or it might have an effect on my CPU. Maybe the overall case is hotter because the GPU is bigger, so there's less airflow. So the heat is dissipating onto the case. Maybe that's making the entire PC a bit hotter, and maybe that's making the CPU boost less. But yeah, it's, I think it's also a matter of variance. So shouldn't be that dramatic and the time spy scores here are very similar actually this is even more dramatic if you look at the graphic score before 5829 now it's 17793 so 5829 that's a three times better performance from a 1070 i mean we probably expected it but it's still nice to finally see it but yeah, even here I get a lot lower CPU score, so maybe the hotter the GPU gets, the less the CPU can boost. That might be a side effect of my small casing. And uh, pretty, the airflow might be limited. I'll have to look into that more. Or maybe I nudged something in the CPU, <laughs> which is not ideal. Uh, but yes, I'm pretty happy with this. Next step is to test this in games. So that will be part two of the road to the tough rtx 3080 mini series so hope you enjoyed this short little video guys and uh, yeah let me know what you think in the comments this came as a complete surprise to me i'm finally happy to share this with you all so hoping for better performance and better gameplay footage from here on out thanks for watching have a nice day looking forward to your comments and catch you soon clumsy Upgrading. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye bye.